After four decades of war, Afghanistan is seeing a rare opportunity to emerge as an independent and stable country, but it has not always been a place of destitution and upheaval. Before 1973, it experienced some seven decades of relative stability and was once even dubbed the Switzerland of Asia. One man who witnessed that era was former senior Chinese diplomat Hua Li Ming, who worked as an interpreter in Afghanistan from 1965 to 1971. He later served as the Chinese ambassador to Iran and the United Arab Emirates, respectively. What were his impressions of Afghanistan back then? What plunged the country into chaos and destruction? And how does he see China's part in rebuilding the country after the withdrawal of the U.S. and its allies? Earlier, I talked to Ambassador Hua himself, who is currently Senior Research Fellow at the China Institute of International Studies in Beijing. Your Excellency Ambassador Hua Liming, thank you very much for joining us. So, you went to work in Kabul, as I said, in 1965 as an interpreter because you speak both Farsi and Persian and you stayed for six years. What was the experience like for you? Um, I would say six years before, uh, Iraq, uh, the Afghanistan was a very peaceful and tranquil uh, country. Uh, small, uh, not very rich, but pe uh, people uh, lived in very peacefully, and uh, especially capital uh, Kabul uh, was a small city, but uh, quite westernized. And uh, you can find all kinds of uh, West industrial uh, goods in, in Kabul streets and uh, some intercontinental uh, hotels, and the people are living there uh, peacefully. And uh, uh, this is my experience. All the six years I stayed there uh, was very peaceful. And uh, as you said, it, it would usually be called uh, the Asian Swiss land. And the Kabul used to be called uh, a petty Paris. Uh, really, uh, it's, it's a very uh, nice, very good experience for me. How do you see the 20 year occupation uh, by the United States, I mean, after the invasion, uh, what do you think they brought to Afghanistan? Uh, really, the U.S. policy yeah, uh, on Afghanistan was the wrong policy. Uh, because the uh, United States, the, the, the George W. Bush uh, wanted to uh, to transfer or, or export a kind of American democracy to Afghanistan uh, by guns. Uh, and uh, actually nothing, no democracy uh, never happened or never, never realized. Instead, war, war of 20 years uh, was going on in uh, Afghanistan territory. And uh, uh, to my experience, in Afghanistan history, um, when there is strong uh, central government, the country will be peaceful and stable. When there is no uh, gov strong government, and Afghanistan will not have peace. And the 20, uh, 20 years we, uh, we have seen uh, is that the 20 years Afghanistan with invasion and without any uh, strong central government. Looking into the future, um, do you see now a window of opportunity for Afghanistan to finally to have that kind of central authority necessary to bring the country together and r restore some kind of uh, stability in the near future? Now the Taliban, they have conquered the, the whole Afghanistan and they claimed uh, uh, the government in Kabul. I wish uh, Tabul, uh, Taliban will uh, establish a strong central government and to be accepted and recognized by all ethnic groups of Afghanistan. Uh, if it is so, if it is he's supported and recognized, uh, accepted by all ethnic groups of Afghan, then uh, we, I wish there could be a kind of a peace and stability uh, back again to Afghanistan. How do you see China 
um, positioning itself in the new era that's coming up? Will it mean stepping up engagement and investment, such as in infrastructure and trade, and uh, in some people's words, filling the void left by the US and its allies? Strategically speaking, Afghanistan is very important for China because Afghanistan is China's neighbor. Uh, we have 100 kilometers uh, common border and uh, Afghanistan is directly linked to China, China's western part. So Afghanistan's stability and peace is very important for China. So that the priority of Chinese uh, policy towards Af Af Afghanistan is first of all, uh, we encourage or we seek the, the Afghanistan stability and peace. And secondly, Afghanistan should not to be the land of terrorism, especially the terrorism against China. So these are two points that China, or maybe the priority of Chinese policy towards Afghanistan. I, I wouldn't accept the, the, uh, to, to say that uh, China is going to the field of the a vacuum of the United States. Why China not? Only, uh, because China and the United States uh, are not enemies to each other. And China never, Chinese foreign policy never has the ambition to, to fill any vacuum of uh, the U United States in the world, so including Af Afghanistan. So what China will do is that to, to encourage the Afghan people to, to make, to achieve their uh, stability and peace and uh, to uh, de-associate with uh, uh, terrorism. China will join Afghanistan people to reconstruct and to, to, to make their life better. Well, I think one of the thing, one of the connotation of this term filling the void uh, is that it's mutually exclusive. It's either you or me, for instance, whether it is United States or China. Uh, does that pose a problem for you, uh, Ambassador Hua, in, in the way how it um, implies that China's foreign policy is, you know, taking up a position and having it all to itself and not working with other people uh, on a common common interest, for instance, working with other partners, whether it is United States or other countries in Afghanistan. Yes, people in the world easily they will think that uh, when United States left China as uh, the second big uh, biggest power in the world, will come into and uh, fill the, the vacuum of uh, the, the United States. But it's not the, it's not a fact. It's not true. Uh, I remember nine, uh, uh, 1960s when I was in Afghanistan, the Soviet Union and the United States, they had rivalry in Afghanistan very strongly. And uh, uh, they tried to have uh, bigger influence in Afghanistan. But now the Sino-US relation is not the, the kind of US and the Soviet relationship. And uh, we China we have have has publicly announced that China never seek a sphere of influence in the parts of the world, mm -hmm. including Afghanistan. So uh, China and the United States are not rivalry to each other. Mm -hmm. I can I can say China and the United States actually they can be complementary to each other. Well, some people are also saying, look, this is a golden opportunity for China to put the missing link of the Belt and Road Initiative in that region because Afghanistan is a very important link of, uh, between China and uh, Central Asia and then to the Middle East. So uh, do you see it that way as well uh, as part of the reason why China would be eager you know, to engage further with, uh, with Afghanistan? Yes, uh, from point of view of uh, uh, Belt and Road, Afghan Afghanistan is so important. As I said, it, uh, Afghanistan is China's Western neighbor. And uh, uh, Afghanistan geographically is uh, directly linked to China Western mm -hmm. uh, provinces. So uh, th this is uh, Afghanistan is the first step of uh, China's Western world to Belt and Road. So I, I think uh, when a peace 
and the stability is achieved in Afghanistan, uh, many things and many projects on the Belt and Road could be done in Afghanistan. But what's the significance of roads and bridges and telecommunication connectivity, for instance? What's the significance of these things to the local people, to peace in Afghanistan? Guns didn't bring peace to Afghanistan. Can roads and bridges do that and make a change for the Afghan people? Of course. Uh, of course, the, the, the pre precondition is that there should be uh, peace and stability. The first, uh, peace so and stability. So you're basically saying, yeah. Ambassador Hua, I'm sorry, you're basically saying China will wait or the Chinese projects will wait until there is peace and stability in, in Afghanistan? Or do you think China will already go ahead despite the volatile situation? I think the first thing is that China will join all Afghanistan's neighboring countries to help Afghanistan make peace, make stability, and make a strong and uh, accepted internationally and internally uh, central government. And then uh, on the base of stability and peace, mm -hmm. we can start and we can speak about the reconstruction, yes. bridges and roads. Um you know, in, in the case of some Western country, they would say this, this government is not democratic, this, com this government is, you know, a dictatorship or it's killing its own people, therefore they're not going to, and it's not good, it's not moral to do business with them. What is China's rationale? How does China see the, you know, the, the, the sensitivity that comes with, the, with these kind of uh, government systems? These are the judgments should be made by the Afghan people themselves. When Afghan people say this is the government, uh, they can accept it. And if they call it democratic and it's inclusive, I think uh, China will accept. And the, the China's basic policy is that uh, do not interfere uh, internal affairs of uh, other countries, uh, including Afghanistan. Finally, without the U.S.'s presence, do you think the security situation in Afghanistan will get worse or better from now on? Uh, we, we pray <laughs> and we, we wish uh, Afghanistan will uh, have resume their security and uh, the, the stability. Uh, the withdrawal of United U.S. Uh, troops doesn't mean that there will immediately peace. And uh, still they have ethnical and uh, uh, tribal uh, tribal differences between themselves and uh, we wish they can solve all the differences uh, peacefully and uh, to to find a, a central government which can be uh, accepted by all ethnic groups That was Ambassador Hua Li Meng, currently Senior Research Fellow at the China Institute of International Studies. With that, we come to the end of this edition of The Point. As always, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter using the handle Li Xin in Beijing. Thanks for watching. You've got The Point.